All right, well, made that start on the heads. What I, all I'm doing is gonna cut this little groove. It's right here behind the lip. You can hear my finger catch it. I'm gonna cut them grooves in the intakes. That one there's pretty sharp on the exhaust. And I started on this one, on, uh, this little sander one, but I'm just trying to see what works the best with the Dremel tool, what I got. So I pulled the valves out earlier by my valve pressure. My valves, they're marked on the bottom, just tell me the numbers. Number two, four, six, eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on these. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find the right what I what I feel most comfortable with as far as cutting them down. And I'll I'll bring you guys back in a minute. All right, I got them all cut down. Feels pretty good. I hit up in here a little bit. Definitely did a little bit right down up in there. Smooth that out a little bit. I did is use my little bit like that and just kind of, I did it on the exhaust real lightly too. Got rid of that little lip. Um, I did hit one of the valve seats. Let's see. I barely nicked it right there. Barely nicked it. I can't even hardly feel it, but. Get ready to lap them in. I should take care of that. But, uh. Yeah, I should clean this head up a lot better, but with all this work that's being done now, I think the area that I'm working on is what's cleaned up, so once I get it all done, taken care of, then you can see where I actually had to hit here a little bit to help, help with the nice roll so the air rolls in better. But, I'm gonna I gotta get some grease out so I can do a little grease on the um, valve stems. So when I slide them in, they turn real smooth and stuff. So I'll bring you back in just a second. All right, all I did is took, I got some Lucas assembly lube, a little bit in that hole. Put a little bit on the valve stem. in there give her some twists as she goes down get her nice and moved up all the way in there and the exhaust is already in there that there seems a little tight but yeah that's not bad so Get some valve compound on there, and I'll get the lapping these in. All right, well, made that start on the heads. What I, all I'm doing is gonna cut this little groove that's right here behind the lip. You can hear my finger catch it. I'm gonna cut them grooves in the intakes. That one there's pretty sharp on the exhaust. And I started on this one, on, uh, this little sander one, but I'm just trying to see what works the best with the Dremel tool, what I got. So I pulled the valves out earlier by my valve pressure. My valves, they're marked on the bottom, just tell me the numbers, number two, four, six, eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on these. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find the right what I what I feel most comfortable with as far as cutting them down. And I'll I'll bring you guys back in a minute. All right, I got them all cut down. Feels pretty good. I hit up in here a little bit. Definitely did a little bit right down up in there. Smooth that out a little bit. I did is use my little bit like that and just kind of, 
I did it on the exhaust real lightly too. Got rid of that little lip. Um, I did hit one of the valve seats. Let's see. I barely nicked it right there. Barely nicked it. I can't even hardly feel it, but get ready to lap them in. I should take care of that. But uh yeah, I should clean this head up a lot better, but with all this work that's being done now, I think the area that I'm working on is what's cleaned up, so once I get it all done taken care of, then you can see where I actually had to hit here a little bit to help help with the nice roll so the air rolls in better. But, I'm gonna I gotta get some grease out so I can do a little grease on the um, valve stems. So when I slide them in, they turn real smooth and stuff. So I'll bring you back in just a second. Here's all I did is took, I got some Lucas assembly lube, a little bit in that hole. Put a little bit on the valve stem. in there give her some twists as she goes down get her nice and lubed up all the way in there and the exhaust is already in there that there seems a little tight but yeah that's not bad so Get some valve compound on there, and I'll get the lapping these in. Well, I'm back on the cylinder heads today. I did some uh, last week. Uh, a few little things I did. I put in the other videos. Just pulled out the. Um, Valve to put the new springs, the comp cam retainers, and or retainers, and then I put keepers, the fifty thou offset keepers. My springs are only rated for five hundred thirty pounds or, or uh, inches of lift, so that's what I've got in there. That's the cam I've got coming. Um, when I had the valves out. I cleaned a little ridge around the throw to the valve so and do no really porting of the chambers may end up gasket matching these when I get the intake um, I've got cylinder head gaskets coming that are the compression thickness is uh, 15 thou I'll boost up my compression so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna deal with these press in studs. Um yeah, I could have spent the uh what seventy dollars for the the kit and the studs and then I'd have had tax and all that. What I did is I went went to the old Harbor Freight store, the old tool store, and I bought myself a box of roll pins, uh, 315 pieces for seven bucks. Bought two of them, but I I did have enough out of out of uh, the box. I got ten of these long ones and ten of a little bit shorter. The shorter ones they fit all the way through. They'll have to be nipped off and the longer ones will have to be nipped off so I'm using 330 seconds ones when I stick these in there instead of going straight perpendicular let's see let me get a I get my fingers to instead of going straight across I'm gonna I'm gonna angle them a little bit that way 
it's a little farther down on the back side you know i may do it going this this direction even whatever but they're going to be and i'm going to make sure they're down far enough also because i don't want you know if these try to pull out i don't want it to break my head right here so i do it at an angle down also the drill angle to miss this would be it helps out too but if i do that it gives me more meat on the back side less chance of this side breaking um i think it's a lot less work than um putting in the screwing studs and i think it's probably just as efficient so these are 30 three thirty seconds i went to a harbor freight about 32 of these so i have a new drill bit for each each one of these i mean if it cuts good through one and i got enough to cut through another or whatever i'll keep going but just in case i got one for i got another pack over there in the bag four times seven is 28 that's not that's not 32 i got five packs makes 35 gives me three extra in case i break break some so uh i still haven't pulled the spark plugs out of this out of the head yet which kind of gives me helps me stand up the head a little bit underneath there to get it a little bit better angle just do it like that I'll get my drill bit in here and we'll try to figure out where I want to center punch my holes at on these short you know what I think I'll be all right going straight down on each one I'm not gonna hold four full of other bits but I just don't want to use them they're they're good better bits and to waste good bits on the junk stuff I'm building so I'm down so far doing all of them at once that way I ain't wasting time center punching each one as I go and all that good stuff uh oh about to need my coffee drove five hours yesterday for Thanksgiving two and a half hours back home where I grew up and then uh Two and a half hours back, two and a half hours there, two and a half hours back. I smoked turkey all night long, man, and didn't get much sleep. So I was tired, so I I didn't stick around long there. We'll see what, what we can do with these. See how I don't think I'm gonna have enough drill bit. Let's see how far I can get them to stick out. Oh yeah, I should be good. When you're drilling metal, you always kind of drill kind of slow, so you don't uh, burn up your bit. I found those uh, cut drill pretty easy for this pass, anyways. We'll find out. 
find out about the stud in just a second. I think I smoked this bit already. It's not hot, but it's a cheapy. Um, yeah, I'm at the stud. I think that's why it, why it got hard. I don't think it's the bit. See how it's cutting into that stuff. Ooh, that's bright. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can't find a longer bit. Well, I don't really have any longer bits than 336. We may jump up in size to 530 seconds. I'd rather do 530 seconds than 330 seconds anyways. Yeah, I have a feeling that's what I'm going to do. Well, I'm gonna guess I'll pre drill everything into 330 seconds and then jump to 530 seconds. I have a longer bit and they're a little better than this. And then I'll I had 
No the drill bit. That was the longest, longest harbor freight had or out of out of scared when I had this problem. Well, I'll bring you guys back and get the logistics of this. I'll bring you back when I go in and cut the 5.30 seconds. And then I'll bring you back again after that when I go stall some uh, pins. All right, well, changed my mind. I drilling that stuff by hand. I don't know. I'm going to... i got to get the drill bit from touching the head. I had to... Do a little shimming, a two by four wire brush. Got it at an angle, so if you look, I mean, it'll come out backside a little lower. So let's let's try this. You can hear where she's touching the touching the head a little bit. Make sure she's lined up. Go in. Let's see, let's see what that looks like. So we gotta go. Yeah, I better pull down on the handle, try to push on that drill bit. Man, my hands are, are weak from all the wrenching and banging and beating with the hammers and stuff. I don't have no grip really left in there. I think I'm in there. Yeah, this is a lot better. I will, uh, when I get this one done, I'll bring it back and uh, show you guys putting the roll pin on but that's what my day is going to consist of is doing both heads maybe i'll bring you guys along for the a little bit of the I'm shouting of the valve seat area when i start on doing that one so i'll bring you back a little bit all right all right i'm gonna bring you guys in and actually this thing actually is cutting pretty good right, so I'll be right to show you I need to give me something to hold this side up a little better but I'll do it with uh, let's hold her up and see that Finding way, but cut pretty good and pretty fast. And then now she's hitting the stud. There she's going through the stud, I think. There, there she goes.
board moving a little too much. Changed out the drill bit, got it raced up a little better here. And of course, another another uh, wire wire brush come into play. Help me, everything's flat. I mean, it's not what you want to call machine flat, but it's flat and it's drilling through. And I drilled one, two, three. Well, this one's one I broke the drill bit on, but I drilled the M3 already. I got these two and that one. Uh, I'm going to show you now how to, uh, how they're drilling. They're drilling really, really easy with this drill press. As long as I can keep her straight. It's flat on there some, somewhat. Yep, see that? That's getting into the point of not having. Slide that wire brush. Oh, I see what she's doing. She's a. Uh, Rocking back here because it's not on anything flat. Let me get it shim. Yeah, when I said shim, I meant a real shim. Wood shim, though. Not a machine. Or a metal one. Yeah, see, that's I'm just missing the thing, so. How close I am to my hole. I'm pretty close. Now, I am kind of nicking the head a little bit, but it's just barely a little bit. Well, maybe maybe I won't because when I center punched my holes, it wasn't meant for the thing. I won't do this on the next one. I guarantee you that. I'll set it in here and just drill it with the uh, drill bit instead of center punch and a, another hole. I mean, it drills right through that cast real nice. And now it's going through the stud. I mean. It's, Sure beats the old hand drill. You know that eater. Put a little more cutting oil in there. Yeah, I just got a call from my service man manager, and uh, they. Um, I'm off, I'm off on vacation. The whole, the whole, the whole shop, our whole shop's closed down, but I'm on call, so after I get this done, I've got to go and work on a forklift. Through the stud and boom not too shabby it took us as long as to drill them pilot holes center punch do them pilot holes as it did just to cut that one out i still got these two to do but i'll have to do them when i get back uh, 
I probably won't be back here till tomorrow. I mean, I'm over a half hour away from this shop, from my house. And uh, you know, that's my buddy's buddy shop. It's his own personal little place. It's not like a business or nothing. He's got all the cool tools that I don't have. So and he's cool enough to let me come out here and build my motor. And it's a lot cleaner than my, my little garage I got. Um, I bought that house in May. And uh, I had plans on tearing me at that garage down and putting me a, you know, like a little shop, a little bit bigger garage, little little metal building, you know, uh, make it a two two door uh, garage, have a lot more room. It's got two garages on it. One's real long but skinny, and the other one's real wide, kind of wide and but not real deep. So it's it's all right, but I'm just, I'm ready for something bigger where I can put some, you know, a lift in there and get some tools, uh, you know, like drill press and this stuff in there too. So I've got to go to work. So we'll uh, see you uh, probably to, tomorrow. I'll get this done and start it on the other head and uh, I'll video more of that so y'all can see it and, uh, and see what I did to, uh, drill out the uh, not drill but grind out the uh, cylinder heads uh, for the valves alright they didn't uh, end up getting down the road and uh, them calling me and canceled the call I had to go on so I went ahead and came back do some work on here Put these pins in. End up drilling the last couple holes off camera. Let me look. Right here. The bevel on these roll pins. Those are the ones you want to. That's the way you want to put it in. Starter. And it got me a little uh, extension. Banked in there. Make sure uh kind of go off the height of this one because I know it's because I know it's uh it's just starting to stick out the back but next, uh, where's the next one at? Right here. Punches it. So, so that's basically how I'm gonna pin these, and I'll come back and I'll just chop, chop, chop them off. I gotta bang that one in there a little better. Hope like that. Try to get all these in there. Uh, ten piece of ten. Yeah, see, this thing's gotten shook up and most of them are all different areas. are easier to start. Let yeah, see. Somebody shook that one up pretty good. Uh, probably me, but I'm pretty sure I didn't shake them up because I knew what was going to happen.
I'll do the short one on that one because of the angle. Without whacking my fingers too many times. Come on. I got to get to go with any one any of them looks any shorter than that. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that. It's gonna be a gonna be fun. Trying to work work into here on these. Uh, bring it back when I get on that other head and we start grinding on it. All right, this cylinder head's done. Uh, I got them pinned. My push rod holes right here. Right down there, right there. I drilled them out a uh, half inch drill bit. And uh, since I'm going with like one, 1 1.6 rockers, either eventually, or I may do it when I get before I do the first start on this thing, but I uh, need a little extra clearance for the push rods. So, uh, what I did, is, what all I've done to this head is I've taken out the valves, cleaned the, let's say this is the intake valve on, yeah, well, this is probably a little better thing since there's two of them. So this is the intake, this is would be the exhaust valve holes, like right in here, there's a lip, I ground them down. Ground that lip off there so they get a little better airflow. That's it. And I put went to the junkyard. I've got other videos, but um, I put them on here about going there and getting them. I got these springs out of uh, 3.6 series two and three Chevy motors. Got these out of Park Avenues. I put a list on in, one, in my previous videos where I got them springs. I paid sixteen dollars for. All 16 of them paid a dollar a piece. Uh, retainers, they weren't really that cheap. The keepers were, the offset keepers I think were 25 and I think the retainers were almost 70 bucks. Um, then I pin, I pinned the studs. So that was $20 to do. So 20, 80, hundred hundred twenty five dollars uh and that's not just this cylinder head it's both cylinder heads so it's um so 125 dollars in these cylinder heads i got cylinder heads for 125 dollars that's what i got um they will handle up to five hundred thirty thousand worth of lift because that's what the spring rate is on here i can go up to with the retainers and the offset keepers I can go up to about 108 or 580 thou lift. That's it. Um, so all I have to do is upgrade my springs and go with a bigger cam down the road. 
with me pinning the studs. Um, let's see. Yeah, I did that. I told you I did that. Did that. And uh, we'll do a little math here to show you on these rocker arms. Um, let me find me a piece of paper on to figure out how much more lift 1.6 rockers will give you compared to the 1.52s that are on. It's 1.52 is the rocker arm ratio on the Vortec heads. There's everybody says 1.5, which yeah, but it's actually 1.2. So I think the cams that come in the Vortex, a lot of them, I think they're a 0 0.420 lift. So what you want to do is divide that by the 1.52. Let me get you guys set up here so I can actually kind of write this down and let you guys see this. Really? Get them legs down. And I can, I might do some math. I'll use my phone for that too, so. Alright. I went ahead and did, just had to cut you guys off, man, besides so having difficulty. So you'll take the amount of lift the cam is advertised lift. Let's say, you know, the vortex of 4 point, or 0 0.420, you'll divide that by your rocker arm. So if you do have a rocker arm, say it's a 1.5, 400 lift, you'll divide that. But this is what we got on the vortex. Right here is what I come up with with it. I just go with the 270. So you have 276 with 1.5 rockers. And I mean, on your cam things, they will say with 1.5 how much lift it will have. But to find out the much difference you'll have with your um, adding 1.6, you'll just take your 0.276 and you'll multiply that by the 1.6. You'll get your answer of 0.442. So that's going to give you 22 thousandths more lift with the 1.6 on this amount of lift. So my cam 495 and I'm on uh, what was it 502 on the exhaust the one I'm buying. So uh, this is going to be so I want to divide that by the 1.52 divide this by the 1.52 equals to whatever to whatever times 1.6 times 1.6 um let me see if, let me uh get my calculator off this phone because i don't think i got one laying around all right i did my math real quick let's see I'll just hold you guys real quick I'm gonna it this way um all right so i did my that multiplied or divided by that and then I multiplied the 1.6 so I'm getting 0 0.521 521,528,000 ,000 lift and my springs are rated at 0 0.530 so getting 24,000 more on my intake I think that'd be 24,000 more on the, let's see, 521, 495, 1106, uh, 11, so that'd be two. So I'm getting 26,000 more on my intake of lift off the cam. I go to the 1.6. Rocker arms. So, with this much lift right here as it is, I may just run my stocks. <coughs> That's probably what I'll do the first time. I just run the run the stock and see what it does. If I don't like it, then I can go ahead and do the one point six. I've already got the one point six in mind. I bought some; they were the wrong ones. I sent them back. They were uh, not self-aligning. So I went ahead and sent them back. 
and uh, this is what I ended up with is this one um, it's a retrofit but I have a roller cam block so my retrofit will work in it without having to do retrofit hydraulic lifters with the bar in there um, that holds the lifters together um, then I'm, I'm not 100% sure certain I'm not sure if my this cam plate will hold this thing this is what because I did put the old cam back in here and I was going to use it but I just I, I couldn't bring myself to do it I got new cam bearings so I don't know if this retainer plate was is going to work with the retrofit I'm pretty sure it won't but they have a thrust button that goes on the front of the retro style and it will um, go against your timing cover. And they have a reinforced timing cover. That's what that's what I'm going to end up doing if that's um, got a TV up there too. I just turned it off a bit ago. But yeah, I'm doing different timing cover because this the one off this motor had a uh, crank sensor poured in it. So I'm gonna, I'm getting rid of that and buying a just a regular timing cover that's got the reinforce for the thrust button. Um, with all that said, I think I'm going to call it a day. I don't even think I'm going to start on them uh, valves on the other one until tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I don't feel like getting any, any greasier today. Thing still looks looks really nice. So yeah, she's nasty. These are nasty ones. I think I showed this man, but look at that. That spark plug. Yeah, well, come on. Folks in there. Well, you can tell it wasn't firing. I mean there isn't I knocked some of the crud off of it. Let's see if I can get it to focus in. She won't focus. Yeah. Don't believe that one was firing. Look at, look at the valve compared to that one. That one. And that one. And then that one's brown. There. You can see there. See? Look at that. All that build up in there. They may, may have fired a little bit, but not much. And these are all... These look good though. And I don't know why that would have been doing that. There's there's no indication of a blowed head gasket or nothing. What was wrong with the motor it had a rod knot. So but yeah, I'm gonna call today. I think uh it got me on call. That kinda sucks, but yeah, I got some Philco performance intake gaskets. They're, they got a raise on them. I think that were gonna be nice. Some distributor button, or well, distributor gasket. Don't use them. That's the intake goes right across there. Don't use them. Just use the silicone because them are bust out and they'll just have a big old leak. Hey, on that note, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here. Probably go drink a cold beer. I ain't had one and enjoyed one for a while. In a couple couple months. Um, with that said, you all have a blessed rest of the weekend with your Thanksgiving. So I'm outie.